So Finn, um, all panels in Australia have to be approved on the way in, right? So surely one's as good as the other, right? So why do you pay more for a quality panel? Why, what makes a crap panel? Well, there's a few things. One is a good panel is going to be backed by a good organisation that is less likely to disappear. These dirt cheap panels, we've both seen it over the last 10, 15 years. Some fly-by-night, usually Chinese manufacturer, not always, sometimes Australian, <laughs> brings out these dirt cheap panels and three years later, they've completely disappeared off the face of the earth. And if you've had that installed by an installer, the chances are the installer won't be around because anyone that's silly enough to work with those dirt cheap panels has probably disappeared too. So you've got no solar installer to go to, you've got no solar manu panel manufacturer to go to, you're absolutely screwed. So that one is the strength, intentions of the manufacturer behind it. Second, assuming the manufacturer is going to stay around, good quality panel will degrade less over decades if you're in this for the long term. And if you're putting solar panels on your roof to get the most out of them environmentally and financially, you should be able to expect them to last 25, 30, 40 years. So they're going to degrade less over time and they're less likely to fail. You buy a solar panel and it fails 12 years later. It's a nightmare because if you want to replace that panel, it's probably not around. The good companies will keep a lot of warranty stock, but even then it's a bit of a nightmare. You might have to bypass it. You might have to shoehorn in a panel that's a different size physically or electrically. You want the companies that have got good process control. You're minimizing the chance of anything going wrong in the future. And this thing's going to be on your roof in the Australian sun for decades and it's going to get absolutely hammered. Pay a little bit extra for a big company that's got good quality control and uses good quality components and it's just worry free you're paying an inch slight premium for that insurance policy that you're just not going to get stressed over the next 10 20 30 years it's just going to sit on your roof it's going to power your house it's going to give you zero almost zero or negative bills and these days it's also going to power all your cars so you can have zero you can have zero energy bills so why not pay a bit more to do that worry free for decades oh yeah 100 percent. you know i actually look at these numbers all the time with people Right? And I think the other thing that people get hooked up in is the upfront cost versus how long it takes to get that money back, right? So the difference between a crap panel that might be part of a system that gets your money back in two years and a really good quality panel that will last for decades might be, your money might be coming back to you in four years, right? But if you're, that, that, it's just two years extra to pay that back for a system that's either gonna fail at year five or be still going at year 25. We're talking many, many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in most cases. You know, like I, I'm, I'm with you all the way. Just go for the company who's gonna support that panel and build a good quality panel for sure. Your solar panels are a tool that save and then once they pay for themselves, make you money. If you're a trader, you're not gonna buy cheap tools even if they're gonna pay for themselves quicker because you don't wanna be on the work site and they fail and you don't want to be buying new tools all the time. So think of it as a tool that's gonna save you and then earn you money investing quality. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And if you get it wrong, they're not that easy. It's not, go, it's not like going over and swapping a set of plates that, that broke because you bought them from Ikea. It's actually quite a complex job and you've got to find someone willing to get up on your roof and mess with that system that they didn't touch in the first place. Well, no you, one wants to do that. Eddie, you must have seen cheap solar systems where one panel's failed and it's so hard and expensive to fix it that they'd rather just have the whole system switched off. Uh, I went to a house on the weekend for some friends of mine actually and, and this, these are family friends, right? So. But, you know, their system was, was not that old, but they had a failed um, panel. They bought the house like this, failed panel. So we ended up having to remove a second panel because of the setup there just to get that system to work back again, right? So, and, you know, sure, we could try and chase down a warranty claim from a Chinese manufacturer that we've never heard of. There's no point there. We can try and jam in some extra panels. They didn't really want to do that. So now that system's already starting to deteriorate. It's already two of 16 panels down already. And, you know, we don't even really have a great solution as to what we're going to do about that. Well, the solution's going to be rip it off and put a new one on. Ultimately, that's exactly what it will be. That's right. Rip it off and put new ones back on. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's you. <laughs> oh, this will get you in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, well, it depends on... You've obviously thought, Who's it, who am I going to get him in trouble with here? <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Sun Power, probably the best panels money can buy. Um, these bags of copper, 
on the backing. Um, they look beautiful. They've got an insanely long warranty, some would argue too long. Uh, brilliant panels, but gee, they're expensive. Are they worth the money? Look, um, Sun Power, an amazing brand, right? They're an interesting brand because people have been saying for the entire 40 years that they're in business that they're no longer, that they're not going to stay in business very long the way they operate. And they've proven everybody wrong for decades. Um, but also, I'm not a huge fan of a 40 year warranty, right? I, I, don't, I cannot think of another product um, sold in Australia that gets, in, that gets put on a roof in all sorts of weather conditions that have such a ridiculously long warranty. So really, I'm not a huge fan of a 40-year warranty. My preference would be capped at 25. You know me. I like REC. I love Winaco. But is Sun Power worth the money? Um, look, I probably think it is. There's two types of Sun Power. Um, there's a Chinese-manufactured Sun Power. There's their Maxion models. The Maxion models, yes, they're bloody expensive, but you know what? They're probably going to last a long time. But a word of caution, just because somebody's installing a sun power panel doesn't mean they're a good installer. I have seen people stuff up a Maxion sun power install. It's a shambles. It's not working properly. And, um, you know, probably there's micro cracks already. Probably they were handled poorly. You know, so it, again, it all comes down to, yes, you can choose a good product, but you've got to choose a good person to install that product so that you've got the complete package. 100% agree. Don't get good hardware installed by clowns. No, <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. I see it all the time. But I've also seen headline products, right? And that's what I call them. Like, so you choose one headline product. You say, I'm selling a Sun Power. The customer's like, they must be great. They package it with so much garbage from cable to isolators to breakers, probably a like slightly inferior inverter and a pretty average installer. So now it's like, I can't believe it. I've got 10 kilowatts of sun power and I only paid seven grand. <laughs> so what do you think is going to happen with those panels in the long run? Because that's the other thing. So, you know, another thing I always say is you can't really just look at that sun power panel in isolation. You've got to look out for, is it actually a headline product with a lot of garbage underneath it? Mm. I struggled to justify paying for some power over REC because I couldn't see anything. I couldn't fault REC. Look, up on your roof right now, you've got REC Alphas. Um, it's 36 degrees outside, ambient. So what do you reckon the temperature of your panel might be right now if I was to touch it? Uh, 60. 60? 65. 65, yeah. So 60, 65 degrees, it's got a temperature coefficient, I think of 0.26, which is the, one of the lowest in is the world. Is that how low it is? 0.26. That's epic. Which is one of the lowest in the world. So, you know, while other panels are derating up there in that screaming heat, REC is able to maintain their, um, uh, their power rating and not be derate, derating as much. But it also actually means they're not as affected as much. The fact that they have that low temperature coefficient means that they're not impacted as hard by that harsh weather as well. Well, so more of the heat's going them. into energy. Exactly. Yeah, instead of into the panel. Exactly sure. right. So therefore, you know, they are really designed up. You know, I'm with you. Price, bang for buck, um, REC for the premium end. I think they're the best in the world. But, you know, look, if someone said to me, I'm going to put Sun Power on your grandma's house or REC on your grandma's house, if it was a great installer, I'd probably give them both the thumbs up.